to joining us, or if you're relatively new here, you are so welcome. Just to say, we have midweek groups, as you've already heard, and we've already said Alpha is starting tomorrow. If you like what you see on our Sundays, then you will love our midweek gatherings as you get to know more people in the church and settle in. Let us know. We'd love to connect you this week, if possible. So this morning, I'm continuing in our new sermon series, Joy News, Life on the Frontline, rooted in our we value, we go. As Gavin brilliantly introduced it last week, God calls us to be a frontline people. Isaiah 54 prophetically energizes us. Enlarge the place of your tent. Stretch your tent curtains wide. Do not hold back. Lengthen your cords. Strengthen your stakes. For you will spread out to the right and to the left. Your descendants will dispossess nations and settle in their desolate cities. And maybe you thought life was about getting up, brushing your teeth, going to work or looking after the kids and then watching a bit of TV and back to bed again. A few meals, a few heated debates, a temper tantrum here and there, a kiss, a shake of the hoover and one Sunday church meeting per week along the way and there we have it, life to the full. No way. Jesus did not mean that. Terry Virgo, the father of our New Frontiers worldwide church movement, writes, The whole world has been lied to and it is the church's responsibility to bring truth to it. You and me, a frontline people. And really, that's what I want to talk about today. What does a frontline lifestyle look like? About 18 months ago, Adrian Holloway, a man with a particular gift of sharing the gospel to people who don't yet know Jesus, asked us as elders a question. As a church, what is your God-given evangelistic drawing people to Jesus strategy? If I was to ask someone in your congregation, what's the main way you do this together? What would they say? I have to admit, initially, I didn't even like the question. I get a bit nervous about strategies to bring people to faith. I don't want to box God in. Jesus can reach out and welcome people all sorts of ways. And he does. We have seen that in Jubilee through dreams and visions and TV and healings. But after that grilling, God did speak to us. Remember what he said? Make friends, try Alpha. That's what he said, didn't he? And since then, we have been seeing great fruit from that, haven't we? Over the last few years, we focused on making Alpha good, excellent. Now Zoom Alpha good too. If you haven't done Alpha before, you should come along. You'll love it. You'll see why it's so good. Alpha gives your neighbours, your connections, your university and school friends maybe a way to explore and discover and understand who our God is. So what does a typical Alpha night look like? Well, it starts with a welcome in normal times with food and conversation. But currently on Zoom, we do that on screen. Listen, I am so surprised how well this works on Zoom, even without food. As we heard from Jonathan's brother-in-law, he was so surprised about the friendliness and relaxed nature of these evenings. For many, many, Zoom seems to be an easier way for people to attend Alpha from the comfort and safety of their own home. Next, we hear a story of lives changed, what we call a testimony. Stories help people see how and why Jesus makes a difference. Stories are not debatable. Stories get people to discover truth and reality from themselves. My story gets you to reflect on your story. After all, we are God's living stories, all of us. Next up, we have a sung worship song on Alpha. Many people have said time and time again that these moments have been times of reflection on what they truly believe. Good musicianship and songs capture their attention and eventually capture their hearts and souls. It always does. Guests are always surprised by this section. Then there's a short talk in the form of an amazingly put together film series, the Alpha Film Series, where creative images and provocative facts call us to think and react. 
We're different people, from superstars to down and outs, from Brits to Asians, artists to scientists, from people of all to present day living saints. Make the gospel, the joy news of Jesus, radical, applicable and powerful. And then after all that, we have a time of reflection. Our breakout rooms, a time to hear what other people think, a time for us Christians to stay silent and listen and facilitate discovery and adventure, a time to meet our guests where they are at. Then we end, 60 minutes all done, very doable in an evening. Listen, Alpha is the key way together that we bring the reality of the gospel into people's lives. We do Alpha well, Jubilee. You can trust us with your guests. And if you're not convinced, try tomorrow night. Sign up, try Alpha. But as I mentioned earlier, the first part of this God-given strategy is make friends. This is where we really want to give ourselves over to the next few years. We believe God wants to broaden this first part, extending Alpha by making friends, connections, close encounters of the God kind. So what could that make friends lifestyle look like? Remember, it's not a method. It's a lifestyle, a norm. It's natural. It's day after day. See what Acts 5.42 says, day after day in the temple courts, in bigger public places of influence and from house to house. That's not door knocking, I don't think. Not that door knocking is wrong, but I think the writer is emphasising intimacy and invitation into one's own personal spaces. Day after day, they never stop teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Messiah, the one who brings a forever hope. So I thought for the next few minutes, I'll quickly give you a few stories and ideas showing where I'm at with this. Not a pro like Shirley or Sue, but learning from relatively recently. How in lockdown we can get to be more creative. So here are a few thoughts. Number one, leaders lead. I think there's a strong link between the evangelistic level of a church and the evangelistic level of its leaders. No pressure. As Andrew Wilson writes, slightly starkly, the fish stinks from the head down, says the Greek proverb. And so it seems. Evangelistic churches, almost without exception, are led by leaders or teams of leaders that are evangelistic themselves. This has been a real challenge to me. Over the last 20 years, I have only really been seeing a continuous flow of guests on Alpha for the last two or three years. Not hundreds, just a few. Why? Well, I think for me, it was a mindset shift. I had to move from trusting me to trusting God. I had to hand over the burden of trying to save people myself to God. It's his work, not mine. And since then, I've been praying diligently for new people to come to faith. I've put reminders in my phone to keep me focused because it doesn't come habitually to me all the time. I'm proactively building relationship in the areas God has put me in, bit by bit and counter by counter, block by block, day after day, year after year. Since Jeremy prophesied about more people on our alphas and our church growing with new people getting saved over the last five years, this is how I've responded to his prov prophetic provocation. Digging ditches through which God's spirit can flow and bring transformation. Are you up for that? Make friends. Try alpha. So leaders lead. Secondly, eat with other people. I eat three meals a day. I know it doesn't look like it. You probably think I eat seven or ten. But no, that's that's not true. I have 21 opportunities to make connections every single day, three times a day. Even if I just used a few of these moments each week, that would transform everything. Meals together are a powerful expression of welcome and community and closeness. For this lockdown period, period I've, had to, I've had Zoom lunches, packed lunch walks, in the garden meals, work breaks. As a family, we have been having more breakfast times and evening meals with our kids than we've ever done before. They are, they are our greatest evangelistic mission field. Let's not come out of this lockdown season more socially distanced. Make ways now for the future and be creative in the midst of restriction. What can
can you do in faith, not what can't you do in frustration, is the question I believe God is pro provoking us with now. Thirdly, find opportunities to be in public places. Acts 5 phrases it like this, in the temple courts, in the bigger places of influence and from house to house. I remember a few years ago, I would deliberately park on Parliament Road and walk through the different streets parallel to Linthorpe Road before I got to where I was working that day at the Cleveland Centre. And as I took this longer route, I would pray for the city. I would pray for people I saw. I would pray for the shops. I would pray for situations. I would pray for people groups, socially and ethnically. I would pray for the churches. I would pray for the town planners and developers. I would sometimes meet people I knew and chat. Being in those settings and letting God break my heart for what broke his and crying out to God who heals and restores stirred me into action. To care, I've got to care. As you know, I am a GP and also train GPs. And every year we have two lots of three hour teaching sessions at the university where all the GPs gather to be enlightened on some subject or another. One day at the surgery, I received an email asking whether there was anything that was missing on the teaching programme that would be useful to GPs. It was one of those increasing moments I was awake to God. So I wrote back saying, yes, we don't teach about spirituality and faith and God. Before I sent it, I prayed, Lord, open this door. It was a big ask. I don't know of any other training scheme who does this subject. There was a deadly two week email silence. But amazingly, someone got back to me and said, can you do it Raj? So each year now I've been raising questions amongst all our new GPs on Teesside about faith and God and religion and grace and compassion and suffering and death and hell and heaven. So far at least five or six of them have been on our alphas. Also, over the last year, I've been regularly attending a local 15-minute Zoom church service in the village I live in. Just the other day, there were nearly 600 views. Who knows how many actually watched? But the point is, Facebook has also allowed us to get into public spaces from the comfort of our own homes. Since joining, they now encourage me to speak on it regularly. People in the village stop to say hi. At some point, I'm going to engage them in Alpha. They prayed for our Monday Alpha on Saturday. I'm presently thinking the same with a new small church in Mask. They have already signed up over 10 people for our Alpha. Where are your spheres of influence, Jubilee? Where do you spend most of your time building friendships and relationships that make a difference? In the park or playground, in the canteen, walking the dog, at work, at the job centre, serving in a charity? Number four, be a regular. Adopt a local cafe, park, shop and regularly visit and become known as a local. Imagine if everyone in the church did this and people got to know that they were followers of Jesus and by their words and actions and, a little, and little discussions got to know love, their love and wisdom and power and compassion of Christ. Wow. You already know about my love for McDonald's. I'll let you in on a secret. It's not really the gourmet food. I was chatting with a lady the other day at my uh, Colby branch, just queuing in the drive through encouraging her to come to Alpha, either with us or through Steve Sutton's Colby Church. I could do that because I already knew her and laughed with her last time I was in. I shop in places where I will see the same people. Over time, you get to know them. One guy at the co-op took the mick the other day trying to sell me a lottery ticket, which I actually don't have a prob major problem with, but he thought I did because I was a Christian. Somehow he knew I went to church and equated that with lottery disdain. That was just last week. Since then, we've chatted again briefly between customers. That story is still continuing. I don't know his name yet but eventually I'll befriend him. Jonathan and Angela, Jill and Paul regularly attend a bridge club. 
Some of you play sports. Some of you uh, go to the pub. Those were the days, eh? Frequently doing normal things day after day amongst communities that get to know you seems to engender trust. Number five, let people know you care. I set my alarm each morning, day, uh, each morning to have a coffee with people at work. I'd just rather get on with my job, but I know that my job is not all that God wants me to get on with. I set my alarm each working day and titled the rounds and I pop into each room, masked of course, and say hello. A few seconds of chat over the years adds up. Alpha invites, mention of church, invite to events, a discussion about a situation they are going through and how the gospel, kingdom of God principles make a difference. Offering to pray for them and doing so. I like to share what I've learned and see what others make of it. I like to plant seeds of questions that will grow potentially. We see in this new Acts 5 church a passion for Jesus that overflows into their ordinary conversations. I know back in university, a group of Christian Union girls who I was friends with, then I had no idea what Christian Union was, uh, unbeknown to me, were praying for me weekly through the whole six years I was there. How did I know that? Well, 12 whole years later, I met one of these very girls at the last Stonely Bible Week, where she was shocked to see me and hear how I'd become a Christian on Alpha. They persevered without knowing the outcome. Jubilee, do current stories of God's activity in your life appear in your conversations? Would your friends characterise you as a Christian because you talk about your relationship with God and how it makes a difference day after day. Think about it each week. What is God doing in your life today that makes following Jesus good news? Join news to others. Share that. Number six, serve your neighbours. Weed a neighbour's garden. Help someone move. Put up a shelf if you're able to do that sort of thing. Baffles me. Volunteer with a local group. It could be one evening or a week or even one day a month. Try to do it with other members of this church so it becomes a common joy. When you do it together, people often see your love for one another, which makes it much easier to talk about church and Jesus and share your stories and pray into them together. During the building period of our house, we didn't get off to a good start with our neighbours. When we first moved there, they wouldn't even talk to us. In fact, they wouldn't even look at us. But gradually over time, a chocolate cake, uh, kicking a few footballs over the fence, seeking their expertise about our plans for a vegetable patch, sharing the glory of our produce, we have started healing some of the frustrations of the past. More recently, I popped over to see them after seeing an ambulance outside their house. He had contracted COVID. I popped around each day, checking on how he was. A few days later, I admitted him to hospital. We kind of said goodbye, just in case he didn't come back. In One in ten like, of, like him don't actually make, make it if they end up on ITU. And he ended up on ITU. Anyhow, eventually he recovered. And when he did get home, I told him that a church had been praying for him. We had been praying for him. We've turned a huge corner in our friendship. He thinks and has told people in the village that I saved his life. But I know the truth, that Jesus responded to your prayers, my prayers, and that's what saved his life. This family were the furthest people I would, would have predicted ever to come to Alpha. Now I have more faith to see them come through. Our God is a miraculous God. Jubilee, we have so many serving opportunities. Open Door, the Hope Foundation, uh, the football team, sparklers, NHS volunteers, local town volunteers, food bank, which I know so many of you already serve on. What can you do differently tomorrow? Seven, ask questions. Read simple explanations to the big difficulties people have believing what you believe. Why does God allow suffering? Why does a loving God send people to hell? How can there be just one true religion? How can Christians sometimes be such hypocrites? 
Why does religion result in so much war and fighting? Hasn't science disproved God? Surely you can't take the Bible literally. Isn't Christianity homophobic? Doesn't Christianity denigrate women? Doesn't Christianity crush diversity? Are we better off without religion? What's God like anyway? In essence, there's only a handful of those questions. And most people, like I was a few years ago, are ignorant of the truth. How Christianity has actually transformed most of those issues, both in the times of writing and still today. How our God is gracious and compassionate and loves abundantly. How Jesus again and again lifted and gave special honour to those whom society and religious establishments often marginalised and put down. How the cross is the ultimate sign of Jesus' love for humanity, you, me, to them. Seeing him giving his life for mankind, whoever you are, whatever you've done, whatever you think about, you cannot come to the conclusion that this sacrifice, this Christian God on the cross doesn't love you. He does. And his scars are still in his hands and feet to prove it. 1 Peter 3.15 puts it like this, but in your hearts revere Christ as Lord. Always prepared, be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks and give a reason for the hope you have but do this with gentleness and respect. There's lots more things, you know that. Listen, we inspire each other. I'm just learning. You guys have been a real inspiration to me. The the Apostle Paul writes in Romans, for I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. Listen, maybe frontline lifestyle starts here. Today, now with all of us, this afternoon, why don't you invite five friends to Alpha with an individualised message, asking them to join you on Monday or the week after, encouraging them that it's relaxed, sociable and fun, because it is. Tell them they would have a lot to contribute, even if they don't think they have, because they do. Make them know that their presence will help others, because it will. Most of all, prepare them for how surprised they will be by what they see and hear, because that happens all the time. If everyone did that today, using encouraging, personalised, joy-filled words, rather than apologising for asking them, I believe our alphas will be packed tomorrow and then on. It's an act of faith. We already have 15 signed up, so let's That be your Sunday dinner challenge. Jesus said, you're light of the world. You're the city on a hill. People don't light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I pray that you will come in power today across all of us listening, that we may declare your beauty and your glory in everything we we do. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for listening.